Thank you for joining us for College Commons Week as we explore the next steps in the college admissions process. My name is Janine Kutu and I'm with the College Foundation of West Virginia. We're extremely excited to host our second annual College Commons Week event, an opportunity that allows us to work together with college campuses to help students navigate the college going process. This afternoon, we are pleased to announce that representatives from Mount West Community and Technical College has joined us during this webinar series. Joining us from Mount West Community and Technical College is the Director of Recruitment, Karen Horner, and Program Manager, Stacy Arthur. Thank you for joining CFWV for this new statewide initiative. Through this initiative, we aim to help West Virginia students and family prepare for and transition to college. As I get ready to turn the presentation over to our presenters, I ask that you use the chat box to ask any questions you may have throughout our time together this afternoon. Staff will address those questions and ensure that they are answered before we conclude today's webinar. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available on CFWV.com later this week. With that said, Karen and Stacy, welcome. And now I turn this webinar over to you. All right, well, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Horner, the Director of Recruitment here at Mount West. And as she mentioned, we have Stacy Arthur with us today. She's the program manager. I'm gonna rely heavily on her throughout this process. I'm fairly new. I started in February. <laughs> so we work very closely together. So she'll definitely be able to help answer any questions you guys have throughout um, if you put them in the chat box. So um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Mount West Community Technical College, but we are a two year um, college. We also offer a number of certificate programs. Uh, we have some certificates that you can earn or attain within like a week. We're located in Huntington, West Virginia. If you're familiar with Huntington, many of you are probably familiar with Marshall University. We're actually just right down the road from them, so we're pretty close. Uh, we also serve Ohio and Kentucky. I'm assuming most of you are probably from West Virginia, uh, but if you are an Ohio, Kentucky resident, you can also come here to college and we have state tuition rates and state tuition rates. We have three main locations. We have our main campus. And we also have a culinary arts center, which is in, on 8th Avenue in Huntington, as well as the Maritime Academy, which is located on Route 2 in Huntington. One of the things that we get a lot of questions about is can I start at Mount West and transfer to a four-year college? And the answer is yes. Um, we have tuition, one of our tuition rates and some of the advantages with that is that our tuition is 40, a little under $4,500 for the year. So that includes the fall and the spring semester, um, which is very um, competitive. And you can also start here. We have a lot of what we call articulation agreements or agreements with these other schools where you can start, finish your first, your first two years with us and then carry on to a four-year degree at like Marshall, Ohio University, or just a couple of the schools that we have relationships with. And Stacey, feel free to chime in anytime you want to add to anything. I think you're muted, Stacey. I am muted, I apologize. Um, I did want to add some campuses that we use other than that is the Robert C. Bird Center and for our welding and machinist programs. And we also use Spring Valley High School for our welding program. Thank you for that. Yep. So one of the things that we wanted to talk to you guys about today are the steps to enrollment. Uh, I know that that seems to be a common question. So when you are thinking about starting college, what do I need to do? So right now I'm kind of assuming that you guys are, I don't know where you are in this process. I don't know if you've already applied or if you're wanting to apply, if you've completed your financial aid. So for the purpose of this, we'll just kind of start from the very beginning and go through the steps. Uh, so the first thing that you would need to do would be to apply for admission. Um, and I'll show you here in a second how to go about doing that. We actually have a paper application as well as an online paper application option. Um, if you are the high school students would just need to send us a copy of your official high school transcripts once you finish high school. If you are a high school student who has taken college courses while you've been in high school, then we would also need your college transcripts. Now, if you took college courses with us at Mount West, we would already have those. So this would only apply 
if you took a college course with another college, then we would need those transcripts, especially if you wanted those courses to transfer in towards your degree. Um, the third step would be to apply for financial aid, which is huge. Um, and then complete the West Virginia Invest Grant. We wanna just kind of share that this is something that to encourage a lot of West Virginia residents to apply when you apply for the financial aid, you're also applying for this grant. Are you? There's actually a separate application, I think, that you have to complete as part of it, but it also ties into your FAFSA. And then you enroll for classes, and we'll show you how to kind of go through those steps. We are in the process of changing up our system a little bit, so it may look a little different as far as how you go about doing that. So this is a good way to introduce that to you. And then the last step, obviously, just pay your tuition and your fees. And so those are pretty much the steps of the enrollment application being the first. So when you're applying for, when you apply to Mount West, if you're doing the online application, I've kind of added two different pictures here to kind of help you. At the very top of our web page, we actually have apply now link. And then once you click on that link, it will take you to another page and if you don't already have an account with us or you've never created an account, then you would need to do that first. And so once you've clicked on the apply now, then you would just need to, the second step would be to create the account. When you create the account, um, a lot of our students sometimes get confused um, because the account questions, the form that they ask, they do ask several different questions that you have to fill out. It's like an online fillable form. And then I think they might, mistake that for the application. So we want to kind of make sure we clarify that to you. So once you've created the account, then it will take you to another page where you have to complete your application. And I'll show you that here in a second. Um, so when you're applying for admission, the things that we need, our admissions office will have to have your completed application. And as I mentioned, your official high school transcript, as well as any college transcripts, if that applies. Um, General requirements, we are an open admission school, so we actually don't require an SAT or an ACT score. Um, Stacey, you can talk a little bit more about that too if you want to. And then I've listed on here our contact information, so you can feel free to call that number. That actually goes to Stacy's office um, with the peer coaches, and they are a wealth of information and can actually help field some of those questions for you. Um, and then the admissions at mctc.edu is the best email contact. So one thing about Mount West is we are open admissions. And so we do not require a SAT or an ACT. And we do have testing here on campus called our AccuPlacer. So you're welcome to take that, but you don't have to. So we have transitional classes that you can start off. And we also have boost camps every semester that you can start to prepare yourself for the 100 level classes. Thank you. All right. Well, what happened there? <laughs> Let's go back. So I think with this one here, it probably took off that other, it took it off, didn't it? Okay. So let's go back to this one here. This is actually, um, you'll see a picture, the very top bar. This is where you can request to register for courses. Um, request info is just for like general info. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about a program that we have, and then this is a closer view of the apply now link. After you've been admitted, um, you should receive an acceptance letter from our admissions office. And this will only happen if all required documents have been received on their end. Um, so obviously that would be one of which would be your application as well as a high school transcript and college transcripts if that applies. Uh, then our student peer coaches, which is something unique for us. We have um, several peer coaches. They're also students themselves and they actually mentor or serve as ambassadors of our school. So they really have a lot of knowledge as far as the steps that you would need to take as a new student entering in onto our campus. Uh, they provide tours, 
Um, they actually guide you through, like if you want to, if you need to complete your financial aid, your FAFSA, they actually will help with that. So they do a number of things through the peer coach office. Um, but one of our peer coaches will actually contact you once you've been admitted to kind of see if you have any questions and see maybe what your next steps need to be and guide you through that enrollment process. Um, some programs I do want to kind of note that even if you've applied to Mount West as a college, you may still have to submit a separate application specific to that program. Uh, applying for financial aid. So the first thing when you're thinking about like, how am I gonna pay for school? This is one of the ways that you can do this is apply for your FAFSA. The first thing you have to do is you have to create an FSA ID. And I think that your students and parents both have to create a separate ID in order to be able to do that. Um, so that's the first step. And then you can go on to complete the free application, the FAFSA form. And I've included on here the Mount West code in case you need that information. Once you've um, filled out your FAFSA, then you will get an award letter noting, letting you know kind of what you've received or what you've been eligible for, whether it be grants, scholarships, or loans. And so I've kind of included here some just some key things. I actually took some of this information from the FAFSA website. So they have a lot of resources on their website as well that kind of does, that includes like how-to videos and things like that, that I encourage you guys to take a look at. Um, but obviously you have the free money, which includes like the scholarships and the grants. And then you can also do a work study program, which you, you earn pay as you work. And we have a number of like work study positions. I know our financial aid office will kind of place you in specific places that you want, or if there's a need, then we, we try to accommodate that. Um, or you can also work in another school sometimes. Borrowed money, um, federal and student loans, you want to kind of take those less because that's money that you'll obviously have to pay back. And I think West Virginia actually has a great, a number of grants and scholarships that you can apply for. And I'll talk about that a little bit more here in a second. I think the biggest thing that we always tell our students too is just be sure that you check your email for these updates. So um, usually they will give you or provide you, send you an email, letting you know what money you've received, your acceptance of letters. So just kind of be on the lookout for that information to make sure you, you've done what you've needed to do on your end to complete that. And Stacey, do you wanna add anything to the financial aid? Um, for financial aid and for admissions and for um, once you get registered for classes, keeping that same email in the beginning is very important. Of course, when, you, you, when you're when you a student and you actually start into classes, you'll get an MCTC email, but it is important to make sure that you do check your email because we do send a, a lot of emails to a Yahoo, a Gmail, whatever email you first sign up for your uh, FAFSA, for your financial aid. Good point. So important. So important. All right, so this is a little bit about the West Virginia Invest. Um, I'm sure if you've attended some of these webinars before, you might've heard of West Virginia Invest, it's pretty popular. Um, I've included the website address on here, but basically this is a, a grant that's designed to cover the basic tuition and it is for certificate and associate's degrees, um, but provided that those programs that have been already pre-approved and a lot of those programs are already listed on their website. And then they also list like some of their eligibility requirements and that kind of thing. Um, it's also known as a last dollar in program, meaning that like when you apply for financial aid, any awards or things that you get, any grants or scholarships will already be deducted before the West Virginia Invest apply. So eligibility requirements for the West Virginia Invest, I've included a little bit of that in here in hopes that like maybe this might be helpful. Um, you do have to be a legal resident for at least one year before you apply. Um, pursued a covered degree program, meaning that like that program has to be one of those pre-approved high demand fields, which I will say that majority of the programs that we offer here at Mount West are that fall into that category. They fall under the high demand. Uh, you have to have a high school diploma or GED and pass a drug screen each semester and complete two hours of community service. Um, and then I think the other last requirement is that like they want you to live in West Virginia two years after you complete that program. 
And there's actually several more requirements. I didn't include all of this, but this kind of gives you an idea of some of the requirements for that specific grant. And as I mentioned, there is a separate application. So you can go to that westvirginiainvest.org and actually complete that one page. It actually just takes a couple minutes to fill out. Some other options that may help finance like the college um, outside of the state funding, which we've talked about the West Virginia Invest, we have, they have the Promise Scholarship, the West Virginia Higher Education Grant, um, heaps in the West Virginia Science and Technology, and I know that they even have a nursing um, scholarship as well on that page, but the CFWV actually has a lot of those resources as well. Um, the Promise Scholarship and the West Virginia Higher Education Grant, um, my understanding is they've extended that deadline until July 1st, so you can still apply for both of those. Uh, Mount West Scholarships, we also have a number of scholarships that are available. We have a lot of our alumni and donors who have, you know, created um, funds to, that students can apply, and they range anywhere from $500 up. Um, they each have different requirements. Um, majority of some of them can be academic related and some of them can be um, as long as you're going into that specific career pathway, they want to encourage students to participate. So you can, I encourage you to kind of look at those scholarships. I know that the scholarships typically are due in April. And so my understanding, I know that they just um, did a round of those scholarships. Uh, but we do have tuition waivers as well um, and metro tuition waivers. So for those who are located in Ohio, Kentucky, sometimes we can waive those tuition um, or at a reduced cost, not waive the tuition totally, but actually have a reduced rate. Other options, um, you know, like volunteer organizations, parent, employer, local businesses or clubs. A lot of these places you can actually look online and I was actually at another school earlier today and there was a website where students could apply for just a thousand dollars. So there's a lot of different places to find funding to help support your college tuition. So just kind of letting you know that you have some options there. And if you ever have any questions, you know, throughout this, um, feel free to ask us those questions in the chat box. Or if you think about them later, you can feel free to send us an email or our contact information will be at the end and we're happy to help you. Um, so the next step is you've got your financial aid, you've applied, you've been accepted, now you're going to enroll in classes. So one of the things that we always encourage students to do is to contact or at least meet with your advisor. Um, a lot of our advisors here on campus, we have them pre-assigned, so they work in specific career pathways. So for example, um, one advisor might do registration for culinary arts um, and the IT programs. So the good side to that is they're very knowledgeable as far as what classes or coursework is required for those pathways and can kind of be an excellent guide for you as you go through and kind of decide, okay, which classes do I need to take? I don't know. Um, so if you're at that point, you're like, I don't know what classes to register for, we encourage you to contact your advisor. Um, and meet with them and kind of discuss what classes could you take for the summer or for the fall. Um, one of the things that we do when you're registering for classes, our system is a little different. Um, so off of our main web page, there's actually a link that says request to register. And so I've included here two pictures, one of which shows you the link that you would click on to request to register. And then from there, just a snapshot of the request to register form. It's actually a little bit longer. Like if you if you were to scroll down on this form, I wasn't able to capture all of it. Um, but like you can actually add specific courses. So you can add up to six classes that you wish to take. And then this form actually goes to our advising office. And from there, they make the assignment based on maybe if you've declared a major. So if you are on the culinary arts pathway, then you would go to that advisor who specifically handles that program. Um, and from there, they would reach out to you and maybe schedule an appointment to kind of see, okay, so are these the right classes for you? Are these the ones that we need to take? So this request to register form is exactly what it is. It's a request to register for specific classes that you've listed. Um, it's not a guarantee, it's just a request. So I wanted to kind of make that note. I've also included the link um, at the very bottom of this slide that you can actually go to directly off of our webpage. 
Um, but if you, again, if you have any questions, we're happy to help. So after you've registered for your classes, um, some things to think about is just make sure that, you know, everything with your financial aid is taken care of, you know, meet with our cashier's office and make sure that everything is, is, pay, is paid for. Um, look into any required textbooks that you might have. Um, and then again, like Stacy said, just make sure that you're checking your emails because that's very important. Um, a lot of times we, we've had people who don't always check their emails. And so that's pretty much our primary correspondence is through your MCTC email. So make sure you check those for any kind of updates. Um, attending classes. And then one of the questions um, some students have is, okay, so when do I buy my books? I have no idea. Um, so we recommend, you know, it's entirely up to you, but the recommended is the week prior to classes, but I know personally with my experience, <laughs> I always tell students to wait until like their first week of classes to decide whether or not they absolutely need to have those books. Because um, when I went to college, you know, a lot of times we didn't always use the books, so I learned quickly to just wait after that first week and then I would buy my books from there. So we leave that up to you, but at least if you do it within that window, either the week before or within the first week of classes, that's a good, that's a good range. Uh, so student resources. So now that you've been admitted, you've applied, everything's good to go. Um, these are some of the things that we have available to help you. Uh, we really try to provide a very uh, a lot of resources for our students to kind of help them. We want to kind of meet you where you are and make sure that we've identified some of the needs and we try to meet those needs. So we have the One Stop Student Center, which one of the things that's great with this is it's basically what it says. It's a one-stop place. So it's where you can actually find out questions to financial aid, the cashier's office, um, you've got the admissions office, like basically all of the student services offices are in one place. So that's what's really helpful for a lot of our students. Then we have our student success peer coaches, which I'll let Stacy expand on that a little bit, but we have about three or four peer coaches right now. Um, we usually hire about eight. Yes. Uh, but our peer coaches are awesome. They work with our students 101, as I mentioned earlier. They will help walk students through the process. We, we automatically, like if it's a new student, we usually try to direct them to our peer coach office just because it is such a good guidance for them. They actually help them apply, submit their applications sometimes. They'll help them with their financial aid, their FAFSA forms. Um, so they're really like kind of the one-stop shop as well. Um, one of the things that we offer is flexible scheduling. So if you're not sure, you know, which college you wanna go to or anything like that, one of the things we offer online classes we also offer live remote, um, which means that like basically you have a designated time that you're meeting with your instructor or for that class that you attend. Um, we also are doing in person for the fall, um, partially in person, not completely 100%, but we are doing partial in person classes in the fall. Um, and then we also have like evenings. Uh, we try to try to be pretty flexible and try to meet students wherever the need is. And so there's there's several different options there for you. We also have a smaller class size, which is great because then you get the chance to meet your instructor. You get a chance to meet your other peers in your classroom. Um, so that really works really well for our student population, especially just because, you know, it gives them an opportunity to to feel like they're a part of something, whereas sometimes you just feel like you're kind of a number. Uh, we do have free parking, uh, free tutoring. Uh, one of the good things I remember free parking, which I think this is a huge perk <laughs> because I remember I used to have to pay for parking and I would have tons of parking tickets. I probably shouldn't say that online, but um, you know, some of the, so to me, I feel like that's a huge advantage right there that you don't have to worry about parking. We have lots of spaces, uh, free tutoring, free Wi-Fi. We have an on-campus bookstore, so you can actually purchase your books here on campus if you choose to go that route. Um, if you ride the bus, we actually have a direct bus service line that comes to our campus. Um, we also do a clothing rack, food pantry, and we do supply bus passes to our students to help um, accommodate if needed. Uh, we have a laptop and textbook rental. So if you need a laptop and you're, you're taking an online class, for example, and you don't have a laptop, you can actually rent one um, from us. Uh, career services, 
I'll talk a little bit more about career services here in a second, but we have a lot of things. They help with mock interviews and everything like that. Uh, library, we have an on-site library. She does a great job. We have the EBSCO host database that students can use to do research projects or papers if they're taking an English class. The library is super helpful. Uh, the lady that runs our library, she will actually come into different classes and do intros on how to access the database and how to do searches and how to help them with writing their English papers, like what information they would need as part of the research piece to writing their paper. We have academic and faculty advisors. So when I mentioned that you would meet with your advisor, if you are a new student, you would actually meet with what we call an academic advisor. Um, once you've been here for um, a couple years or a year at least after your first year, then you go to the faculty. So if you were in a specific program track, then your advisor would then become the faculty member who teaches majority of those classes or is the program faculty of that. We also have student accessibility services. So this is um, if you need accommodations. We have um, Amanda Bowen. She's actually our new student accessibility coordinator. And so you can provide that information to her and she's happy to help you. And then we also have student veteran services. So we have somebody designated to help our student veterans register for classes and kind of learn the way of the funding sources and things like that from the federal agents to kind of learn, okay, what, what tuition assistance is available uh, to a student veteran. So he's a wealth of resources as well. Yes, and Karen, we had a question about if we had a cafeteria. Yes, actually, I'm trying to go back here, guys, sorry. <laughs> I'm going too fast, I'm going ahead of myself. Uh, we do have a cafe. Uh, currently, it's not running right now. Um, and I'm not sure if the cafe will be up and going for the fall or not. I think that the intent is that yes, we would love to. I know that all of us here on campus are like, yes, please bring back the cafe. Um, but in the interim, what we're doing is we're actually working with local food trucks and they're coming up to our campus and providing lunch. Um, so that's, that's a secondary option. We're not quite sure yet if we're gonna be able to open up the cafeteria again in the fall or not, but we'll definitely keep you posted on that. Great question. All right, so here's some student activities. Stacey, do you wanna talk a little bit about these? Sure. Um, the student activities can grow from semester to semester. We have the main branch, which is the Student Government Association. And then as students come on board, they can actually create their own clubs. And that's what we have had is the Pride Society, the book club, the ASL club. Um, I think we had a gaming club. We had a music club. There was several that students have created on campus. So that's really nice. Um, one of our big clubs is the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. That is one that you have to join. And then we have some uh, majors that have their own clubs that are involved with the student government. And they um, will have different activities on campus in the lobby, which as you can see here is the PTA American Sign Language and Early Education. I think massage therapy is another one. But it's a lot of fun and just getting involved in campus is very important. And I will say this too, if you want an opportunity to meet some of the different club coordinators or the student SGA, we are having an event on um, June 10th from like three to seven. So a lot of this information we've also covered here, we would be happy to share again and you'll get to actually meet program faculty as well as a lot of these student representatives that will be helping you as you go through this, the college, your college journey. So career services, um, I mentioned a little bit about career services earlier. We do have an on-site career services department. Um, it's spearheaded by Jennifer Judge, and she helps with resume and cover letter assistance. So she meets with students even when they graduate or any point during their educational journey. Um, she'll help them build their resume. Um, she also does mock interviews. So she can actually kind of set up uh, or simulate what an interview would actually look like and ask you questions and help you prep for that. And I will say that's such a huge thing too for 
everyone, um, even for a lot of our students. I know when I first graduated and I was applying for my first job and I did not do a mock interview. And thank goodness, thankfully, the gentleman who interviewed me provided me with some really good feedback. Um, otherwise, I probably wouldn't have been a great interviewee <laughs> going forward. Um, he definitely pointed out because it is nerve wracking. You know, you're nervous when you go into an interview. You're not really quite sure what to say or how to respond sometimes. And even if you do all the research, when you get to that point and you know you're actually having the interview, those nerves still kick in. And so I, I really encourage people to do the mock interviews because they're a huge they're a huge asset for helping you prepare for the workforce and getting that job. We also have our, through the career services, they also do a career inventory assessment. So as part of this assessment, this is something good for students who aren't really sure what they wanna do, what kind of career track that they would be a good fit for. The inventory assessment actually helps kind of identify some areas of strengths um, and suggest to you maybe some career tracks that would be a good fit for you as you know with your personality and with what you'd like to do if you're hands-on or if you're not hands-on that kind of thing if you are really interested in math it helps identify careers that would be a good fit mm -hmm. um, we also do career fairs and workshops uh, Pre-COVID, we actually did a lot more like on our campus and we usually try to do a career fair in the fall and then again in the spring. Um, but I think she's trying to do a mix right now and possibly do some virtual career fairs. And so you might see Jennifer out as you attend a career fair in the future. Yeah, and we um, had a question about the career services Okay. Um, to see if Mount West helps students find jobs after graduation. Yes. Um, I did want to say that we do have um, our career services does post on Lincoln a lot to make sure that they do um, after they graduate to follow Mount West on the Lincoln account. And I know at one time we had a portal like basically it was an employer like employers in our area could post positions within this portal that students would have access to so they could actually apply to specific jobs or vacancies within the area. But yes, the answer to the question is definitely they do Jennifer helps find jobs for a lot of our students once they graduate from a program, we try to get you in the field that you have studied for. For sure. Good, great question. All right, so one of the questions was, okay, so how how do I know, you know, if the campus is going to be closed, like what's going to happen, like what what are some safety um, strategies that are in place? So we have what's called Connect Yard, and I've actually included the website link on this um, slide as well. But like basically, auto, by default. Um, you're notified of any closures or delays in classes or anything like that via your MCTC email. So it goes through Connect Yard and then Connect Yard is connected to your MCTC email and that's how you're notified. Um, you can add other channels to that if you wish. So like I've entered in, like you can actually do text. Like for example, I actually put in my phone number so I get a text and an email, so I get both. Uh, but they found that a lot of times people will check their text before they check their email. So if that's something, if that aligns with you as well, then I encourage you to sign up for the text option. And they also have social media. So you can also add social media as a channel and then it will notify you on your Facebook, Instagram, or um, however you wish to be notified. On-site security officers. We have several officers on site. Um, they are Alice trained. So I know a lot of times the concern is, you know, okay, so what happens um, in the particular situation? Like our, our officers are very well trained. They know how to handle a number of situations. Um, and then we have ongoing drills to kind of help with that. And then actually one of the perks with um, our security officers, they will provide assistance. We have a little go-kart that will, not a go-kart, a golf cart. <laughs> Sorry, guys. A golf cart. A golf cart, a go-kart. Yeah, all the same, right? A golf cart that will, that they actually take you to and from your vehicle. So if you're taking an evening class and you're a little concerned about walking out to your car by yourself, they can actually escort you out. Or if you wish and you're not able to, you've got a lot of things you're carrying and you just don't feel like it, they'll actually take you to your car if you ask them. Um, and one of the other things I didn't include on here is actually they actually help <laughs> charge batteries. So if you, um, I had a car that 
apparently my alarm system was going off for quite a while. And so my battery went dead. And luckily, I didn't even know this. I found out that they actually have a portable battery charger. So they can actually help you with that as well. So um, we always encourage um, anybody to visit our campus. I think this is very important, no matter what college you're planning to go to, you know, visit the campus, see, see what kind of climate it is, you know, what the culture is. Is it, is it going to be a good fit for you? And I know, Stacy, you can talk a little bit more about this, but we do do tours Monday through Thursday, um, anytime from eight to four. So you can stop in and then our peer coaches will provide a tour for you, or you can schedule a tour. Um, sometimes we've done small group tours lately um, to keep in compliance mm -hmm. with COVID. Um, you can contact us at that number listed in the slide as well as or via the email and we can set up and schedule a tour for you. Stacey, you want to talk a little bit more about that or anything? Sure. I mean, um, anytime you want to come in to see the campus, make sure you let us know different programs you're interested in. We might be able to set up um, some you know, invite some of the program directors to meet you directly, which is really nice. So you can actually learn a little bit more about the program. Um, but we have been doing walk-in Wednesdays. So from, what is it, 11 to, 11 two, to 2? 11 to 2. And on our website, you can actually schedule a time for us to call you. So, because sometimes the phones are down and or we're busy and it's hard to get to the phones. So please reach out by email um, or schedule a time for us to call you on the on the website as well. All right. So we've I've listed our contact information. I, I know some of you have asked questions throughout this, so that's great. Thank you for those awesome questions. Um, but you know, we would always love to hear from you. So if you love if you have additional questions or maybe you have a thought about it, you go home later and you're like, oh, I have other questions, let me contact them. So feel free to email us directly. Um, again, my name's Karen and this is Stacy. Um, our contact information is listed on this slide, as well as the contact for admissions, financial aid, accessibility services, and our advising office. And if you guys have any questions, um, we'll open it up to that. We'll open it up for questions. Thank you so much for providing this wonderful presentation. It's definitely filled with a lot of useful information for students. Um, I think you all addressed all of the questions that we've had in the chat so far, but I did want to um, ask a question that some students may be thinking of if they are in the next step in that admissions process. They've already been admitted and they want to come to Mount West. Are students required to attend some sort of new student orientation or what would the next steps be for them? That's a great question. <laughs> I contemplated whether to include something about that or not. We are actually currently working on a new, we're revamping a lot of things on our campus and one of which is our orientation program. Um, we've, we've done a couple of things in the past. We've actually had an online version and then we've done some in-person. Um, I think obviously we've had to kind of change that up to accommodate the, the COVID regulations as well. Uh, but we, have had some changes in our staff. So we want to kind of update some of our videos. We're hoping to roll out something for the fall, um, but we're not 100% whether or not that's going to be feasible or not. Uh, so I guess the best answer I can provide to you right now is we will, we will let you know. So we always let our students know if we're going to have an orientation. We'll let you know in advance so that you know, hey, this is to be completed or if we're able to break you up in small groups, we can do small groups on campus possibly for the fall. And because I definitely think we, we feel it's very important to have for some type of orientation to set you up on the wrong, the right foot when you come to campus. Yes. Um, obviously, it would include things like how to access your email, um, you know, what to do, make sure you have your student ID and some of the resources available to you and possibly even a tour if you haven't done that already. So we're hoping to have one in the fall, but right now we don't have one in place. I hope and that also, um, like she said, the peer coaches, that is they could set up individual orientations with each student. So if a student really wants, you know, the whole tour and the whole orientation, learning about the MyMCTC and email and et cetera, they could schedule a time with them and come in as well. 
And like Karen was saying is we do have an online orientation that lists everything and it's actually up on the website. Anybody can access it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, that was definitely useful information for students to know. Um, with, before I close, is there anything else you'd like to add? I can't think of anything <laughs> right now, Janine. <laughs> I think I've, we've tried to cover everything that we felt like a lot of students would ask. And then also some of the questions you guys had um, mentioned that you had a lot more of and focus it on, but I mean, feel free if there's any other questions that anybody has, they can always contact us and we're happy of course. to. Yeah. Great. With that, I wanna thank the team from Mount West Community and Technical College for joining the College Foundation of West Virginia during College Commons Week. Please reach out to them with any questions you may have. And thank you for those who have joined us to participate in this webinar series. If we can be of any further assistance, please reach out to us at cfwb.com. Thank you so much and have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>